Hello all, today's, ar- today's article is a safe space for self-expansion, Attachment and Motivation to Engage and Interact with the Story World, by Silver and Slater. It was published in the November 2019 issue of the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships. If you'd like to read the article for yourself, check the description down below for a citation and link. People engage with stories all the time, be it through TV and movies, books, comics, video games, etc. One potential reason why people might seek out fictional narratives is that they have attachment issues in the real world. In social and developmental psychology, attachment refers to the ways in which people seek and gain emotional support in close relationships. The strategies and behaviors involved in attachment tend to develop based on an individual's relationship with their caregivers when they were young. When the caregiver is consistent in providing a caring and nurturing environment and encourages the child to explore and experience the world, the child develops a secure base from which to form relationships with new people. In the unfortunate case is when this doesn't happen, the child has what is called insecure attachment, and this becomes a barrier to them forming meaningful close relationships later on in life. And this difficulty in forming meaningful, healthy, close relationships can lead to problems attaining what we in the field call basic psychological needs. So what are basic psychological needs? Well, there has been some debate about this, but the theory is that in the same way that we have basic physical needs like food, water, and shelter, we have fundamental psychological needs to thrive. Various authors over time have argued what exactly those needs are, but for the purposes of this paper, we are talking about relatedness or the need to be close with people. Also, to keep things simple, we're just going to focus on being close with a romantic partner. Prior research has found that people with less secure attachment tend to follow celebrities more closely and become absorbed in narratives. As to why this may be the case, there are a number of possibilities. The fact of the matter is that we tend to relate very strongly with fictional characters in fictional worlds. We cry when, F Man Game of Thrones spoiler warning, Maze Hughes dies and cheer when Arya kills the Night King. When narratives are at their best, we are wholly invested in them and empathize with the characters in their triumphs and failings. Now, how does attachment play into all this? Well, for one, narratives allow us an escape from an often uncomfortable reality, and they give us a safe space in which to self-expand, that is, add positive aspects to our identities. We can also look to fiction to meet our unfulfilled psychological needs. For example, people in unhappy relationships can try to experience what a loving relationship is like through a romance novel. Also, people who struggle with control issues might benefit from experiencing a carefully created world and story. Now, attachment insecurity itself has two dimensions, anxiety and avoidance. People with high attachment anxiety but low avoidance still seek out intimacy but are unsure of the security of their relationships. People with low anxiety but high avoidance tend to simply push people away. To be clear, you can be high in both or low in both. Patterns of where people fall in both dimensions are associated with varying coping strategies. For example, people who are high in both tend to feel a lot of ambivalence toward their close relationships. Which brings us to the present study. The authors limited fictional narratives to TV and film to simplify things. They operationalized engagement using the constructs parasocial relationships, imagined intimacy with characters, transportability, the ability to travel into the fictional world, boundary expansion, the pursuit of intrinsic needs in the story world, Retrospective imaginative involvement, thinking back on story events, and narrative impact, the perceived influence of the narrative on the self. And thus the authors had one main hypothesis. They predicted that high levels of anxiety but low avoidance would be associated with greater narrative engagement, but engagement will decrease as avoidance increases. They recruited a nationally representative sample of U.S. adults. While that final N of over a thousand looks impressive, a full third of the people they recruited failed attention checks, so that's not good. Attention checks are items you include in a survey to make sure people are paying attention and not just clicking randomly. They also excluded 48 people for finishing too quickly. The theory behind this is that they were moving so quickly that they weren't paying proper attention to the survey. I find it kind of concerning that the only non-white options they included were black and Hispanic, especially since good canned ethnicity questions are right there in Qualtrics. Qualtrics is the standard software that we use to create and deliver surveys. They also didn't list sexual orientation, which isn't a super big deal, but I'd still like to see it. For attachment, they used the shortened version of the Experiences and Close Relationships scale. I'm happy to report that that shortened version has been peer-reviewed. I don't know how many papers I've read that use custom short versions of various measures, and that's really not best practices. 
Measure development is a pain in the butt because we want said measures to meet a rather high validity standard. When researchers just use their own one-off shortened versions, we don't know if those short versions hold up to those standards unless the authors do that in a pilot study. Spoilers, they usually don't. Also, bonus points to authors for framing this questionnaire in such a way that people with all kinds of relationship backgrounds can answer it. The authors wanted to control for media exposure since anxiously attached individuals might just watch a lot more, so they asked people how much story TV and movies they watched in an average week. To measure parasocial relations, they used a brand new, by science standards, measure specifically looking at the offline aspects of engaging in media. Boundary expansion and retrospective imaginative involvement were also measured using peer-reviewed and validated measures. As was transportability, but self-reported impact of narrative seems to be a measure created for this survey, and I've already explained why that's not best practices. And now results. Interactions were analyzed using Preacher and Hayes' process macro for SBSS, which is fun software that allows you to do some advanced multiple regression stuff. Unfortunately, the paper didn't give me enough information to recreate their charts with my own pretty colors, so we're going to use theirs. I should also note that in all models, they controlled for ethnicity, gender, and media exposure. For the group of people with high attachment anxiety, those with greater levels of avoidance tend to relate more with fictional characters. For the group with average levels of attachment anxiety, greater avoidance was not associated with differences in parasocial relations. And for individuals with low anxiety, greater avoidance was associated with lower rates of relating with characters. Regarding boundary expansion, we see a similar pattern. For people with high attachment anxiety, greater levels of avoidance were associated with much greater levels of boundary expansion. For those with average levels of attachment anxiety, greater levels of avoidance were associated with higher rates of boundary expansion. And for people with low levels of attachment anxiety, there doesn't seem to be a meaningful, even if significant, association between levels of attachment avoidance and boundary expansion. We see the same general pattern with retrospective imaginative involvement. For transportability, the high attachment anxiety group didn't see any trend, yet mean group had lower transportability with increased avoidance, and the low anxiety group really saw lower transportability with increased avoidance. And for self-reported negative impact, the general trend holds once again. In sum, the main takeaway here is that people with high attachment anxiety tend to really engage in fictional narratives, at least in TV and film. For people who have high attachment anxiety and high avoidance, this effect is magnified. However, for people with high avoidance and low anxiety, they really don't engage in fictional narratives as much. Okay, this might be a nitpick, but it really bothered me when I was reading the paper. Self-expansion is in the title. Self-expansion is a pretty well-defined construct. I've worked on a number of studies looking at it in various contexts. That construct wasn't even really measured in the study. I don't know if they included it in the survey but didn't get significant results with it, or if they just wanted a clickbaity title, or some other third thing. The closest construct they measured is boundary expansion, but that's not the same thing. It's adjacent, but it's a different construct. Regarding other limitations, I would just like to state that their sample of frictional narratives that people follow is kind of narrow and simplistic. Story-based TV shows and movies can come in a lot of different genres, and different genres might have different levels of engagement. Furthermore, people might behave differently when different media are involved. Some people really engage with books, whereas others with comics, and still others with movies and TV. Also, we don't know if these engagement behaviors are adaptive coping or not. One other thing. The authors note that their effect sizes are pretty small, even by social psychology standards. Effect size is a statistical measure of, in layman's terms, how much we should care about their findings. That said, if it turns out that these behaviors do help people deal with their insecure attachment, telling people en masse to engage in fictional narratives is pretty easy to do. And if it only helps 1% of people, that's still a lot of folks when you consider that just the United States has a population of 330 million. Also, if one instance only helps a little, it could be that over time those effects could compound. As to future directions, I really want to see some work looking at different media of fictional narratives such as books and video games. I could see video games in particular seeing really high baseline levels of engagement, so it'd be cool to compare gamers to, say, television viewers, and seeing which people with differing levels and flavors of insecure attachment prefer. And if it turns out that this engagement is an effective coping behavior, then maybe video games are better than TV. I'd also like to see some work trying to tease out what genres people with insecure attachment tend to gravitate towards. 
Maybe they really like fantasy because it allows them to escape reality. Or maybe they really like romance because it allows them to feel like they're in a satisfying romantic relationship. I don't know, but it'd be cool to see. That's all for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you've got a paper you'd like me to dissect, or more thoughts on this one, let me know in the comments.